Cool. Well, um, my name is Devin Walker, and I'm going to be talking today about using third-party code to create unique and meaningful solutions. Uh-oh. There we go. So when I first started developing, um, I wanted to do everything myself. I wanted to prove to people that I could build certain things that had already been done before. I wanted to have full control. And after a while, you know, I figured that I was reinventing the wheel a lot. And I started to question myself, kind of like this uh, Velociraptor right here. A am I reinventing the wheel? You know, and a lot of times I was. Um, so I figured it's better to save time and money while also giving uh, your software the functionality that it needs. So this is where third-party code is really useful and you see it used um, throughout WordPress core, throughout almost any software that you use today. Um, third-party code is essentially a code that is developed by uh, an entity other than the original developer or development team of the application or software um, that's being used. So third-party code can add a lot of value to your uh, software. For instance, uh, charts and reports, uh, search. Search is a big thing. Um, elastic search is something that you're seeing come more and more into the WordPress world. Um, mapping, there's Google Maps. Everybody knows about Google Maps. There's Leaflet, there's Open Street Maps. There's lots of different options for mapping. Of course, modals and pop-ups. These are just a few examples. You know, everybody's seen modals. You, you click on an image, they can open an iframe, they can do Ajax requests, they can do so much complex functionality that it goes beyond just opening an image in a, a larger resolution. They can also save you time and money, like I mentioned in the title. Um, for instance, we don't yet really have a meta fields API for WordPress. Hopefully it's coming soon, but we use a plugin called CMB2. Has anybody heard of that? Excellent, um, excellent bit of code developed by Web Dev Studios. Allows you to create uh, really complex custom fields in the front end or back end of WordPress. Um, for all sorts of utilities, it has repeatable groups that you can create really advanced um, fields that if you were to develop that on your own, it would take a lot of time. Um, it, it might not end up the, as good as they've uh, developed, and you know, you'd have to support that code base yourself. Um, frameworks, everybody's heard of Twitter Bootstrap. It's just you know, one of the most popular uh, frameworks for building either a web application or a website. Uh, Foundation is also very popular. Um, SDK software developer kits. For instance, I have a screenshot here, it's really hard to see, but this is the Stripe PHP SDK. It makes it really easy to communicate with uh, Stripe's API to do certain things like update uh, customer records, um, to, to uh, you know, retrieve payment information, certain things like that. JavaScript libraries, uh, jQuery. You, there isn't really a WordPress theme that doesn't use jQuery now. I mean, it's like everywhere. Um, to do simple things like uh, you know, expand a, a div or um, toggle an element, it's just one simple method. If you were to do that in vanilla JavaScript, you know, it might not be as cross-device compatible, cross-browser compatible, touch compatible. All these types of uh, methods are already developed in, in this convenient library for you. So why not utilize that? Make sure you choose these dependencies wisely. Um, or third-party code wisely because they can become dependencies. Once you develop and distribute your software, then your code depends on it. If you were to take that out, for instance, if you have a nice reporting um, analytics in your plugin and you were just to take out that, that library that runs it, it's not going to work. Your plugin is dependent on that functionality. So what to look out for when you're evaluating these uh, different repos that you find on the internet? Um, activity, uh, Bitbucket and GitHub make it really easy to see what kind of check-ins and commits have been uh, throughout the last year time span. Uh, stability, are they using semantic versioning? Are they properly tagging it? Uh, extensibility, what, what kind of documentation, what kind of methods are there to uh, extend the functionality of this um, code that you're trying to incorporate? And how popular is it? You know, popularity is an important thing. You can see the stars on, um, on GitHub, Bitbucket's very similar, um, as well as some of the other repos like Beanstalk. So what to ask yourself, is this supported? A lot of times, you know, CMB2, there was a previous version. If you decide to use the previous version, it's not supported. It's, it's old, dead code. So 
make sure you read before you incorporate that into your software. How is it documented? Um, documentation is very important. The thing about if I were to code a, a plugin and just pass it off uh, without any documentation, a lot of people would be confused on how to use it. it. It would take time to discover exactly what's going on there. Um, are there regular bug fixes? Are they open to pull requests? If you need something and you want to contribute, are they willing to accept that or review it? How's the code coverage? Are they doing unit tests? Uh, can you be confident in it? Is it secure? I mean, we've been talking about security a lot here. That's, I went back and I added that because I, I needed to mention, you need to make sure that it's secure because you can open your uh, uh, software up to vulnerabilities that you're unaware of because it's in a, a third-party plugin or, or something like that. Who else is using this? Make sure that there's other reputable uh, companies or, or, or uh, software out there that are also using the thir third-party repos. Um, will it scale? Is it going to bog down your uh, performance at, at scale? And then who's behind this? Are these people that, that are known in the community or, or are they just, you know, you know, nobody really knows who they are? So two uh, interesting tools for researching this. Uh, Open Hub is a great website. You can put in a, a repo. And this is CMB2, for example. And it gives you the number of commits. There's 1,400 commits. It, it gives you an estimated number of uh, hours slash years that it took to develop it. It says it took like an estimated like 14 years to develop this plugin. I'm not sure how, how true or not that is. But um, it has 81. Uh, committers on it, or contributors, excuse me, and there's also, um, it, it says it's, uh, you know, 75% PHP, and as well, if you go over to the right here, this packages graph, it shows you who's using it exactly, who's requiring that this plugin be used, so you can actually see other uh, reputable um, repositories and software that are, that are using it. So, and, and make sure that you always check the license. A lot of times, um, there will be a conflict in the license. Can, it be, uh, can this code be redistributed? Are you planning on releasing uh, a plugin on WordPress.org with this in included? So you got to make sure that the license is compatible with that. If you're trying to do something that's closed source, maybe a SaaS platform or, or a commercial product, you definitely got to read the fine lines because you don't want any legality issues down the line. And finally, keeping it up to date, as you develop your software, you're going to you know, produce more versions, you're going to have more releases, and the same with these different repositories out there. So there's different tools like Bower, Composer, WB Packages that allow you to require these dependencies. And by the way, if there's an update that's critical, you should make sure that you include it, that within your next release because you don't have vulnerabilities. And then you can use Gulp and Grunt, choose your flavor to compile and package it, and also keep it up to date. Tom McFarlane's a, a great developer. I love reading his blog. He's you know, pretty um, well known in the WordPress space. And he's written about third party qu code quite a bit and, and how that relates to developer maturity. And, and he says, knowing when to roll your own solution versus using the work of others is a sign of developer maturity. And that's why when I started, I said, when I first started out, you know, I kind of wanted to prove to myself and everybody else, my bosses, that I could, I could hack this stuff, I can make it, I could develop it myself. Um, but as I slowly, you know, progressed throughout the years, I realized that um, it's, it's wiser to analyze the problem at hand, uh, look for potential solutions, then determine whether it's, it's the right route to go with a third party code or to do it yourself. Thank you very much. My name is Devin Walker. I know this is a fast presentation, but it's a lightning talk. And you can find me online at uh, Interwebs, and uh, this is a link to my slides right here. I, my main plugin is called Give. It's a WordPress donation plugin. We are the WordPress uh, community consultants for Media Temple, and our company name is WordPress. Here's all the, the links to all the repos I mentioned, some of the uh, different um, utilities, and, and further reading here, as well as Tom McFarland's uh, blogs on dependency management and third party code. And are there any questions? Wait, wait, this one? No, no, that one. <laughs> Down? Oh, okay.
I didn't know you guys were gonna look at me, okay. Thank you. <laughs> we got there, we got there. Are there any questions? Yeah. Yep. Um, but it was more advanced than my, my developer skills at the time. And what I found was that when I went to you know, experienced developers, um, a lot of them would say, like, I, I don't even want to touch this other person's code. I'd rather just develop it myself. Right. Um, I was wondering like, if you had any suggestions on how to mitigate that and actually utilize this freely available code. Yeah, you know, the documentation is really what's important to passing that to different developers. And as, as well, these third-party um, dependencies that you include in your software shouldn't ever really be touched and modified. Um, just like WordPress core, it's kind of, you know, never modify it. Everybody's heard that, you know. And the same can be said with, uh, with this. And, and that's where extensibility and the different methods that they provide you to um, expand upon what their functionality is, whatever it is, um, it, it, it should be able to be picked up and passed off pretty easily. Does that answer your question? Kind of, yeah. Kind of? <laughs> Any more questions? Can I, yeah. can I comment on that? I yes. I just want to say that, that as a developer still mature, when you find that you hit limits to the plugin, it, I'm sure that the, the author of that plugin would love for you to contribute the thing that he doesn't have back, back to it when you do eventually figure it out. Yeah. That's a great thing. And, and the pull request, you know, GitHub's making them easier and better now. I don't know if you saw that this last week. And, and as long as they're good developers, they're going to be open to those uh, community uh, contributions. Yeah. If I may add to that. Please do. Pay the developer. Instead of hiring a programmer to fix that code, consider talking to that original developer and paying him money to enhance his code to make it better. Hey, money's great. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. And then there's no overhead to CSS and JavaScript that gets loaded in these plugins. <laughs> I don't need to keep them compiling them, minifying them in a much better situation. So I would actually go for the development on your own route in that case. Yeah, you know, I, like I said, it depends on what you're doing and, and what you need functionality wise, where it's going to be used, will it scale, is it secure, all that. You know, if you included uh, Tim Thumb uh, like four years ago in your you know, library, you had a lot of security risks. And, and, uh, and that's just one example of uh, an exploit that was widely, uh, you know, attacked. So I agree with you. I, I think you need to be um, very vigilant in what you code yourself. But again, I, I would say that you still are open to um, seeing what the community has to offer. Yeah. One, I say thank you for the talk. No problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed how fast they'll just email me right back, give me what I asked for, sometimes charge a minor amount, but, mm -hmm. but that, that does work. Um, and then a question I have for you, the more complex the site, the more of these dependencies you're going to get, the more plugins you want to add. And then over time, these sites can be a real hassle to update. Yep. You, you, know, you get plugin conflicts. You do an update, maybe one of the a feature breaks because it's not compatible with the newest version or whatever. My question is, okay, how do you pose this to the client and how do you bill for your time? Do you have any strategies? Of, you know, in the client's mind, I pay for that site. That site's done. It should just work forever now. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, you know, we go through that with clients and, and then it's about educating them before you pass off the website. If you're going to be you have a contract to build a site and then it's their responsibility after that. You know, you have to explain to them, uh, especially with WordPress <coughs> core, that it needs to be updated. If things aren't updated over a large amount of time, 
um, you can be open to uh, exploits and and you know offer them the the ability to manage that you know but it's not going to be free um, or you can point them to some of these uh, maintain is a company WP site care uh, there's a lot of these um, now maintenance uh, companies that will do it for a lot cheaper than an agency could do themselves. You know, you might be looking at a, a much larger retainer with an agency rather than a, a smaller one. Um, as far as maintaining the plugins within your own, as a plugin developer, you know, we're always looking for the latest version of CMB2, see what they updated, see if it's compatible, and that's where unit testing really comes in to make sure your functionality stays in place if you do update uh, a version that is a major release. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I mean, so you, you, you approach it like a, a maintenance contract. Like Basically. Over time. We, we have hosting, but also, you, you know, just to keep that yeah. it's going to take. Definitely find who's going to be maintaining the site at the company that you're building it for, um, educate that person, and show them how to do updates themselves. Um, staging environments are always key for that, for sure, too. Well, the problem I've had with that, a lot of the premium plugins, like if you look at WooCommerce and all this, as soon as you move to a staging site, it says, oh, none of these plugins are registered on yeah. the site, and then you can't do automatic updates, then yeah. everything gets out of whack, and I've had a challenge with that. And, and on those sites, sometimes it's easier to just do it in place rather than move to staging. I'd be cautious with that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you could always FTP it up too. I mean, the minute that somebody wants a custom theme or a custom plugin, obviously I'm not going to modify um, WordPress or something like that. Right. Small plugin, it becomes custom, it gets changed, and it gets locked. 555 on the directory, and that's it because. If it's you have modified, obviously gets updated, then you're then you're the thing you can have your site breakdown is what he was talking about. So once you make a plugin your own, it's yours. You have to develop it, maintain it and everything. And simply you may be able to hold it for two or three years before you really have to rewrite it completely. Mm -hmm. But you just you take a snapshot of it, if you will, a snapshot, and it becomes just like a theme, you fix it. Because if you let it update you're going to, you're bound to crash sooner or later. Yeah. <laughs> this is why version control is so important. I mean, Absolutely. You've got to use, I mean, even if you're a low-level developer, you have to learn GitHub. I mean, you have to do this because that will happen, and then you'll have this code that you worked on, and then you update it, and you're like, oh, F, just go back. Life's okay. It's safe. <laughs> yeah, or or that, or you know, um, a lot of these hosts, the premium uh, managed WordPress hosts, have snapshots that you can roll back to pretty easily. Um, you might lose some data from the past day, but at least your site's back up. Just make sure that before you do anything, you back up, back up, and, you know, absolutely. Make sure your database and, and back up off the same environment. Do it offsite. You know, back up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really easy for others to pick up and put down. Yeah. Cool, guys. Well, um, I think it's lunchtime, so let's get some barbecue. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>